All right, well, we definitely just uh, lightened the mood. Yep. So we just saw The Life Between Oceans, the new Derek, what's his last name? <laughs> Sion <laughs> France. Incredibly France. depressing film. Mm, I don't know about the. It had some happy. It was pretty. Ha it ended kind of happy in a way too, but yeah, it, it was sad kinda, too. But... So what do you think overall? Do you think it was good, bad, or? I'm not okay. sure. It's. Uh, I, th I think there are a lot of pros and cons to it. Well, I, I really can liked it. I can definitely yeah. see why uh, on Rotten Tomatoes it's swapping back and forth between the rotten and uh, and fresh cusp. Uh, you know, it's funny. Mm -hmm. I was actually watching from the start when it had its first five reviews. At the start, it was at zero percent. Wow. So it, I guess you could say it went from zero to sixty in about two point five days. Is it a sixty now? Well, last time I checked, it was yeah, last the 40s. time I checked, it was a sixty. Yeah. So sixty fifty nine. Yeah, between so, those two. But yeah, so, so I really liked it, but it's yeah. definitely my least favorite of his films because you've only seen Blue Valentine, right? Yeah. I've seen both Blue Valentine and The Place Behind the Pines. The thing that is weird though is this actually does not feel like his other films at all. Like they have, yeah, they I, have this weird, they have this style to them, and it just does not feel like them at all. But yeah. it, it feels like this feels like yeah, it felt like it was directed by a different person to me. It felt like it was like because this is because it was set during like you know a British early British era in a way and that's just that feels more like something like uh, mm. i don't know the director i forgot i'm trying to think of i don't know one of those guys mm. rejects one of those <laughs> movies but yeah because mm. but it was still it was interesting i liked it i didn't have like i did the only problem i was a little bored at the beginning but once but once everything got going he got he once he met Akiva, I can't, I can't. Alicia Vikander. Yeah. yeah, I shouldn't. I actually get, know her name by now because I've seen her in so many movies. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen basically almost every movie she was she's been in in theaters, except for like maybe some low budget stuff she was in. But mm -hmm. I've seen mo most of her the big stuff I've seen in theaters, like the Danish Girl, which is the one that won her the Oscar, and a bunch of other stuff. And Ex and Machina. Ex Machina. Yeah, I've seen all all her like everything, even Burnt, which she was she was only in there. They only added her in later because she was. Popular became popular oh i didn't know that <laughs> yeah i don't filmed. even remember that she was in burnt but yeah she wasn't she was she was added she was the, his ex-girlfriend or whatever mm -hmm. and she was just added in there like during reshoots so they for because she was popular or whatever yeah. and she was good so was fussbender they were very good together too and mm -hmm. rachel weiss is also really excellent even the minor actors who i didn't know any of their names but yeah. they're all really good yeah <laughs> So the thing that uh, really, the thing that really made a uh, Blue Valentine grab me is that the entire movie felt totally, totally natural. Everything about it, and for for this movie, it actually kind of did start out that way. It kind of has that. Uh, it has like a, it has like a very leisurely pace, mm -hmm. and after that, though, when it gets into um, when, when uh, after after this couple goes through two miscarriages, and um, supposedly the second one was a stillborn, I think, from what I've read, when, because I, I have the book, I've, but I've only read the synopsis. I haven't actually read the book yet, but I read the synopsis, and the synopsis said that the first one was miscarriage, but the second one was a stillborn. Mm. Well, because, what's the, what's the difference? I actually um, don't know. Miscarriage is when it's like when the baby is still an embryo or whatever, and then it just uh, the embryo just breaks or whatever. It doesn't oh. happen. And then uh, mis uh, stillborn means the baby was just born too early. Like the baby oh. was just like it, you know when you ever see those pictures of those babies that are really shriveled up, those are usually still still okay. Borns. So like very prematurely born. Yeah, because because like um, there's born that show, I, I, uh, Sons of Anarchy, the, the show about the motorcycle gang. There's a the, the show starts off with a, a character's kid being stillborn, but it actually survives. Yeah. <laughs> My brother-in-law was born very prematurely. Yeah. And he's actually really healthy now. But yeah, it's it, it's always a bummer to see when people have to go through that. And I think they handle it pretty well. Because I've seen films where they've handled it just in a really weird way. Or it's just like, okay, that's... Like, okay. like Saw handled it. They're one of the Saw films had a miscarriage. And I just thought Ugh. the way they handled it was just weird. It's just like, dude, one of the, the it bad... Was. One of the really bad Saw films. I think it was like Saw 4. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one of the awful ones. <laughs> yeah. But so um So after like uh, the first half hour or so i think it is but when um 
but before they they find this baby floating around in a boat with uh with, with her father who's dead and um they take the baby in yeah yeah they, they the take her in and uh and it gets really complicated when uh when michael fassbender's character tom the husband he he sees uh the woman at a graveyard outside of a church and she turns and out to be she the, turns out mother. to be the mom who lives on the island lucky lucky yeah and and, well, and yeah. so yeah it gets very complicated from there and that's when it kind of it kind of turned into a movie if you know what i'm talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. because it started out that with that very natural tone like blue valentine yeah. and but but then when it got into uh but but then when yeah when the plot started getting going that's when the uh when the when the the pleasure of the slow pace kind of kind of wore off of it yeah well like i said I, the part where I, the, the part where i got interested it was right sometime after he met uh, when he well, he fin when he officially met her when they talked sometime after that was where i started to get kind of more invested after that moment but yeah i did i do agree that i think the beginning is really good the parts where he's just like mm -hmm. in the the with the lighthouse and the stuff and her or whatever i thought those part yeah those are for the definitely the best part but it just yeah and it did get a little you know very movie with the the music all the time mm -hmm. and the the sappy it, it yeah and it is it, it is a little sappy but i still like i said that's why i, I liked it but it's my least favorite of his films yeah. and this is also i just realized this is his first film without Ryan Gosling. Oh yeah, so it is. Because <laughs> yeah, both of his other um, Blue Valentine, Place Behind the Pines, have Ryan Gosling in it. This one does not. <laughs> yeah. I have to say also, this is probably like uh, the first film since maybe like Eyes Wide Shut, where the couple having sex is married. Yeah. Though, um... And I did like that, that during that scene, it's not like, it's not like really embellished, is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah. Like with like, the rising music, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very real. It's kind of, it felt yeah. kind of realistic, except, I mean, not as realistic as the spectacular now, the sex scene in the spectacular mm -hmm. now, but it still felt really, it felt still, they handled it pretty well. Yeah. And I'm surprised, like, this... I, I, I'm surprised they didn't show, um, Akiva. <laughs> Alicia. Alicia's, Bikander. Alicia's, because in the Danish girl they did, they showed her nude. Yeah. And, <laughs> and like a blue Valentine, the sexual content, that gets, really like really rough i well, had it, to uh, it was click seven, away from it while it, it was, was c17 originally yeah, yeah originally. but but uh it ryan really ryan gosling was calling sexism because there were similar scenes uh done to a man in other films that came out that year and he felt the only reason they made nc17 was because it was a woman scene so that i won't describe of course but and so yeah that's why they brought it down to an r again and yeah, well, that's good. I'm glad they did that. Yeah. But it's bad. Like, I definitely think, I would definitely recommend, like, for this guy, the director's filmography, it, um, I would definitely recommend Blue Valentine and Place Behind the Pines. I actually have Place Behind the Pines, and it's, they're both, they're both really, really good and well done movies. And a lot of people, I think, like Place Behind the Pines a lot better. But like I said, I, I like I've told you before, I prefer, I still kind of prefer Blue Valentine to to place behind the pines but i still like place behind the pines it's really good and it's definitely it's and this is like i said this this movie the life between oceans is definitely my least favorite of his films and yeah. i read a report yesterday saying that derek Sion france yeah. if i'm saying his last name right <laughs> you probably can't pronounce it so <laughs> you're saying it probably better <laughs> than i can i just come conference <laughs> conference all right I'm probably saying it wrong Derek too. Derek Conference. But... <laughs> He's Conference now. Yeah. <laughs> it was years before I realized how how uh, Joaquin Phoenix's name was pronounced. Joe Quinn. I was always saying. But... Joaquin. Yeah. Okay. So. Joke. So I read a report yesterday saying that the director sees this as like a uh, a companion piece to Blue Valentine. I guess because Blue Valentine is showing how how like young love devolved into divorce it was kind of a therapeutic film for him because because he uh he wanted to he wanted to do that film after after experiencing his parents divorce when he was 20. Blue and Valentine? so yeah no, okay and so this is more about a about a, a love that lasts through through like a re really troubled times and 
It's also and so and so what's what really starts to to uh, tear these two apart, Michael Fassbender and uh, Alicia Vikander. What what was her name? Her character's name? Tom and uh... <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, it it was like uh, al almost like more than halfway into the movie before before I learned uh, Tom's name actually. Well, I I didn't really I don't really pay attention to names all that much from in movies yeah, I mean, usually. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, so, just, I mean, it's weird if someone just keeps saying their name over and over. Hi, dude. Yeah. I mean, I don't call you Pop all the time. <laughs> I only call if I'm like I'm calling you out, like Hey, you. And then I go. I don't, but I don't just go Hey, hey. I was like yeah. Pop every five minutes. I talk to you. Yeah. And so what's happening is that they, the the baby that they find they they start to raise it, it and um until it's like four years old and through that time after uh after tom sees sees the the real mother um he starts to feel total guilt well he was he already even, sort of kind of feel guilty before well well yeah even even like just days after after finding the baby after um but it just it, it, he, he leaves he leaves a note at the grave for for the for the mother to find saying your baby is alive and well pray for me yeah. and, and some, I, something along those we'll lines pray, we'll, and then your your husband and then your husband has died sorry or whatever or did he write it in his husband's handwriting or something I don't know I don't know I, I don't think he did yeah but, but then they they did the yeah but it was... so so yeah he starts to feel more and more guilt until he gets to the point where he just you can't well, we'll yeah, we'll have to. Uh, do we have anything else to talk about before spoilers? <laughs> uh, well, uh, we've already talked about the acting's really good. The music from Alexander Desplat. De Desplat. Yeah, I can't. Desplat. Yeah, she's right. he's really good. He's done a lot of music for a lot of movies. He's very. I like his his musical style. He did like he. I think he did the music for the last couple Harry Potter films. Hmm. Though his music was, except for in the last one, they kind of. His music was kind of lost because they were they retread on the the John Williams music. They reused the John Williams music a lot, so a lot of his music I kind of got lost in that film. Hmm. But but yeah, they but still it was. Uh, but like I said, it's it's not as good as Blue Valentine or Place Behind the Pines. But I, like I would say, go see those before you see this. Um, but it's definitely it's but it's definitely an enjoyable film. I would definitely go like I said, if you love this like like I'm pretty sure if you love love stories and stuff you'll love this film probably like, yeah if you're in a sh <laughs> but it's def this is definitely for people who love love stories because like, I think like those girls that we saw when we went to go see the choice who were crying I think they would love this film <laughs> likely yeah. but it's still it's still really good it's just my least favorite of well, they probably wouldn't like the beginning. They probably like the second half better, where it becomes more filmy, <laughs> mm. seppy film. Because the first half definitely feels like the Chan Frins film, Derek's Derek, what's his name's film. But then the, those it kind of changes and feels kind of like a different film. Yeah. For that part, but it's still it's really good. I would definitely recommend it. Yeah. Especially because I know even though I know even though. Uh, what's her name? Alicia. Alicia yeah, okay. I, I just need her first name, Alicia. Yeah. Alicia, because I'm I don't know why I'm always a Kiva or a Kiva or something, but it's, it's <laughs> Alicia. So I'm, I don't know why I keep thinking that. Yeah, Alicia. She Van Kander. Yeah, uh, Alicia. Like a lot of people thought. Like I, I'm. I kind of didn't think she deserved the, it for the Danish girl. I thought she, there's a lot of other movies she was better in that, especially last year, but. Because the Danish, I, I thought the Danish girl was kind of man. This kind of reminded me of the Danish girl, at least the way it's shot, kind of. Hmm. The kind of, and they're kind of in the same locations, a lot of waves and grassy plains and stuff. It, it did kind of give, <laughs> but I would, I would, I don't know. I, not that I just thought this was definitely better than the Danish girl because the Danish girl was just kind of meh. Even my, even my brother, who's really into like trans stuff didn't even like it so <laughs> but yeah this is definitely better for her yes <laughs> but okay let's move on yeah. okay so spoilers well do you want do you want to grade it and stuff and then well, talk I about suppose... spoilers because that's what we did for well, when we spoiled uh we did 10 cloverfield lane we we finished our thoughts and then we spoiled it well okay um although I, there is like uh 
there was something else that really bugged me that kind of brought my that might have helped bring my grade down somewhat but okay well I guess we'll get there second uh, I'm going to go with a B minus B minus yeah yeah um, I'm gonna go with just a B I think it's it's very like this is very good I like this film I thought it was good I just it did it just I did, like I said it's my least it's my least favorite of Derek Derek's films yeah let's go call him Derek <laughs> but it's definitely my least favorite of his films but I, I'm still I'm still hoping for the future for him I'm gonna I'm still gonna be excited every time I hear a movie he's gonna direct unless of course every movie keeps coming out that sucks or <laughs> something like that but other than that I'm gonna I'm gonna see what happens we'll see all right spoilers so through through the four years that they they have the child whom they name Lucy, uh, her, her real name is Grace, mm -hmm. and so through those four years, Tom feels more and more guilt to the point where he eventually confesses to to uh, the the child's uh, birth mother, and so and so. And so, of course, because of that, he uh, he he takes the the full blame for it all, even though it was actually more his his wife's idea. She talked him into it, and so. And so, so yeah, he takes the full blame, and. And his wife finds it, finds it really difficult to. To forgive him for that, and so much so that she would let him like go to prison alone. And so as, and so as this child starts living with the, uh, with her birth mother. I, mean, I felt so bad she, for the girl in that situation. I, I really did too. Yeah, because yeah. you just it's it's really. It just sucks when, like, you, you live your whole life with these, like, this people that you call your parents, and then some lady comes on and goes, "Hey, guess what? I'm. They're not your mom. Mm -hmm. They're not your parent. I'm your real mom." It's basically, yeah. it's like, it's like, it's like you built like a nice house, and then she just some comes in and breaks it. Yeah. <laughs> kind of made me think of, uh, of uh, the the few days when uh, my my younger sister came home from Thailand, because I actually have an adopted sister. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just, it, it's just a bummer. It's just like, because, I mean, I know that she, that Rachel, what's her name? I keep forgetting her name. Vikander. Alicia. No, no not Wait, no, Rachel. Wait, no, no, Rachel. Um, what? The, the, the mother, the real mother. Rachel Weiss, yeah. Rachel Weiss? What? Or y w e i s c. Uh, you're making me forget. <laughs> it's not, it's, I don't think. Because I actually could say her name, and now I forgot it. <laughs> but she's, yeah, she, I saw her in the, she, this is probably one of my best, her best performances I've seen from her since. Um, the, she was really good in The Lobster. I saw that. Uh, I'll tell you about oh. that later, what I thought about that later. Yeah. But I, well, but yeah, it's, she was really good in this, and, but I just, yeah, it's just, I mean, I understand that she wanted her kid back, but I just, I just feel that it, and especially Fassbender also too, because he was kind of all, oh, I think it is Rachel Weisz. Yeah. Uh, oh, um, like he, he's just like, oh, I have to do because of guilt, but really he should have, like, like, uh, Alicia, Alicia said, they should have, they should have thought about the kid. I mean, you kids, especially because like she said, she's too old. I mean, if they did it, if they did it when she was a baby, she could, she would have dealt with the real mother thing all over, but like since she's a little girl, since she was kind of old enough and she got used to these people, just it kind of it, it did kind of it would kind of ruin her life and mess. I mean, look, luckily she ended up okay because you see her at the end, but you can continue what yeah. happens. I just all right, to so, add that. <clears throat> so it gets to the point where where the girl's real mom starts to feel that that Lucy is like totally attached to them and and she feels that it might be best to to uh, give her back to them which i i don't know if she would actually do that it's well, i don't i don't she, know it's uh, she just she just wanted her to come and help i think it's not just to give her back she wanted to she just wanted her to help because the bait because uh, Lucy Grace. That's her because her name. They her when she lived with the with the the with um, Fassbender and 
and Alicia, they they named her Lucy, but then when, but her real name, her name when she was a babe, when she was born, was going to be Grace. Yeah. So, but but and since since she wanted, she still wanted to be called Lucy. The the grandfa- um Rachel Weiss's grandfather in the movie decided to call her, who's all who's an actor, I recognize, but I couldn't, I don't know his name, but he he actually names her Lucy Grace. Yeah. So yeah, so she her and what was who were we talking about? Um, how uh. Yeah. I got confused talking how, about how the space. real mother says to uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Alicia yeah, yeah. that uh, yeah, she just wants help. She doesn't. She's not going to just give the baby away. She just wants. I, th- help. I think she did say, "I'm giving her back to you," didn't she? Yeah, I don't. Well, no, not really. I think. I don't know. There were there were there were actually times in this movie where uh, where it was a little hard to make out what they're saying. Mm-hmm. This this is a really quiet movie. But uh, uh, okay, so. But yeah, I didn't. I just think she was more saying that she that they could they she they, that she would just help help her or whatever. I don't think she would just say she would completely like. I don't know because that's what kind of uh, this this is what I was getting to. This is kind of what, what. What, what motivates her to run back to her husband, apologize, and uh, take the, and take the rightful b- blame that she has. And well, honestly, well, what it was because she she decided to give her husband a chance or whatever after that, and then she read the note, and then that's when she decided to or whatever. But okay, keep going. Okay, so maybe that makes it a little better because I was thinking, wouldn't it have been more powerful if she had uh, if she had come back to him before if before that happened? But, okay. Well, because she, she needed. Because she probably did need a push from or help from somebody else to forgive her husband. Because a lot of she was being kind of stubborn or whatever about yeah. it, and I don't know. Okay. And then, uh, and there, there was a, uh, there, there was a, a nice ending to this, even though, even though I think they really rushed the, uh, the, the moment. Um, between uh, old old Tom and his wife when when she's on her deathbed 25 years later it's only like a, a 10 second scene and then and then in the next scene we see Fastbender and he looks like no different at all mm-hmm. well he still he, he has old makeup on and he he had gray hair and stuff he still looked uh, his hair wasn't gray no his hair was gray it looked pretty gray and it still looked pretty orange orange he's not a, he's not a redhead yeah. <laughs> but Okay. Uh, but, okay, so we just move on to trailers. And yeah, stuff, I guess or... so. That's yeah, it's full thoughts on Light Between Oceans. And yeah, we got a few trailers to talk about. There was uh, I don't know if there's really much to be said about the new La La Land. Well, cause it, it's this since the first one was uh, Ryan Gosling's I guess perspective. It was him singing, and then this one time, it this this trailer is a little. It, it shows more. It not only does it show her singing, but also shows a bit more of her. Because the first one was actually more about Gosling and his mm. stuff, and then the second one was more about her. So I mean, by this trailer, are they gonna do a dis? Are they gonna do that stupid thing they did with the disappearance of Eleanor Rigby and release like three movies? <laughs> that's that's. Do you ever have you heard of that movie? No. It was a movie with uh, Jessica Chastain and James McAvoy. Where they were, um, where they were like these guys in a relationship, and she disappears. And then the director of that decided to make three versions: one from his perspective, one's from her oh. perspective, and then one from both of their perspectives. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, is like I don't know why he he wanted to release three films, but that was like right. that must be it. They're all on Netflix too. You can oh. find them all three versions on Netflix. <laughs> But like, like especially when they were in theaters, do you you want poor people to like pay for three movies? <laughs> well, I've heard of authors of books doing that. I mean, uh, Twilight for one. I think Midnight Sun, that most recent Twilight book, is like um, Twilight from from Edward's perspective. Yeah. Though I highly doubt they're going to turn that into a movie because that would make no fr- that would make no sense because the movie is basically no one's perspective. <laughs> the movie, so it's just like, but like especially. Like even though there's a new Twilight book, I'm surprised I never heard about it. Like, I would no one talking talked about it or anything, or I saw no advertisements. Like I would thought someone would be yakking about it. Like when the new Harry Potter thing came out, everyone's like, "Oh my god, Harry Potter!" Yeah. <laughs> I actually did hear that the author just announced three more Harry Potter books. Yeah, that's true. Like, like I said, I hear all that. Like even stuff from you, just like, yeah, that always like Harry Potter. But like, like 
Twilight, I guess Twilight's popularity is just dead, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, then again, you can it kind of makes sense because Twilight kind of sucked. So, <laughs> yeah. but anyways, and now we've got a new successful series, Fifty Shades of Grey. But I'm, can't wait for Fifty Shades of Darker. I, know, I just I don't even have like year. any. I don't even care about that series. Like that's just like yeah. a series where I just have like don't like Twilight. I mean Twilight. I had I went to high school, so I had to hear about it all the freaking time. But like, but. But Fifty Shades, I mean, I hear about it sometimes, but I can kind of ignore it. But yeah, La La Land, I still want to see La La Land. I'll give it a yes. Yeah, I, I still do too. And I just recently and... actually saw a movie that the, because this it's from the director of Whiplash. I saw another film mm -hmm. that he wrote, Grand Piano, which is really good. It's on Netflix. You should check oh. it out. But he only wrote it, but it's really good. It's with um, Elijah Wood and John Cusack. It's really, I'm not going to say anything else about it. Just watch. It's called Grand Piano. It's really good. Yeah. Um, there was Hidden Figures, what a movie about, uh, I guess, about the first women who get involved with NASA. Yeah, that looked good, but the trailer was a little disjointed. There was, like, like it was, there's a scene where they start playing, like, this fun, happy music, blah, blah, then dooped up the sad music really fast. I was like, slow down. Yeah, they, to... it, it kind of comes across like it's going to be, like, a kind of a quirky comedy. And, Do you... yeah, you... I don't, I don't know about that one. It seems like... I'm going to give it a maybe. Yeah, I'm going to give it a maybe, too. It just seems like it's another one of those films that's going to make, like, a big deal about, like, a, the, you know, the first women getting involved in this and that. Well, and, they're the thing that also, too, is they're black women, too. Because yeah, the thing that, that, the thing that but, makes me want to see it is I love Trod... Taraja P. Henson. I'm probably pronouncing Taraji P. Henson. Yeah. It's some. It's Taraja or something. Tra okay. P. Henson and Octavia Spencer. That's mm. though that actually move. Actually, that kind of moves it a bit into a yes because I love those. I love those those two actors. But mm. on that, yeah, just I'm still not super because I've seen just because it's it because it's a woman. About, it's about women's rights. It's about black. It's just like there's so we get mm. so many movies about people's rights. Not that I'm I'm all for rights. I'm just I'm just getting sick and tired of the, these all all these movies are starting to kind of. Bleed lead into the same thing and it's getting kind of yeah i just would like something else i guess or do it in a different way i mean i'm like i said i'm excited for uh what was the one from uh the new one from jeff nichols jeff Nich uh, oh yeah yeah um loving loving that one looks good that yeah, one looks really to be but this one just looks kind of this one it looks kind of like it's ripping off the help a bit <laughs> same director right no that's that's um Girl on a Train. Girl on a Train, right, yeah. yeah. Tate Taylor's directing that one. But it, it feels like, it feels kind of like how The Help was, like a kind of funny, sassy, like a kind of funny-ish, um, but still has serious topic or whatever. It kind of feels like that. And even as Octavia Spencer, and another thing too is, as Octavia Spencer and Kevin Costner are both in it, and they were both in another film called like Black and White or whatever, which was another... Black or White. Black yeah. or White or whatever, which I heard, I actually heard that wasn't very yeah. good. Yeah, it wasn't really. And this is coming out in January, too. Yeah, so that that's also not Black a good Black or White did, but... Yeah, but, but because I like Traja P, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. Yeah, I guess so. Um, and um, and then, of course, Rogue One. This is not as good as the first, but it's still good. It's still enjoyable. Yeah. It's just not as good as the first. The teaser trailer was amazing. Yeah. And then this one is just... It's... It's good. It's good, but it's not great. And I really, we don't need the dang Darth Vader at the end. Yeah, that. <laughs> That's just stupid. A lot, of, a lot of people love that, but the this, it's probably like the most, the most shameless appearance of a popular character in a trailer, like, period. Because well, because there isn't like even a a lead up to him at all. I mean, at least in like uh, the last X Men Apocalypse trailer, there was kind of like a, uh, there's kind of a, a line that led to. Uh, Wolverine's brief appearance at the end of that. Yeah, because um, but well, but even still, I still thought that was kind of forced, and so was yeah. The it's Spider -Man just it, scene. you're there and it's gone again. Yeah, because yeah. I just I just think it would be more effective if they if they showed up, all if you know if the character showed up on there, we get to see it for ourselves. There's no surprises any like the only surprises we get is like in Suicide Squad when the Flash showed up. That was a surprise because they didn't do they didn't show that in any of the trailers. But like when Spider-Man shows up, when like Spider, we got like I think, like I said, Spider-Man I think would have been even better if Spider-Man just sort of appear if we if Spider-Man showed up and that and and we didn't know about it that would have made and same thing with Wolverine too mm -hmm. I thought it would have made it more interesting but yeah. I still just feel like don't I just felt it was just a yeah, stupid they, idea yeah. 
but but still there are some uh, there are some really awesome shots in this trailer and they like, got more um, Donnie Yen. Like, Yay. <laughs> yeah, mostly with uh, the Star Destroyer. It's like the one shot of the Star Destroyer hovering above like that uh that huge rock formation. And the, and then the one of it uh, mm -hmm. uh moving out of the shadow of the Death Star. I think yeah, I love the, the Death oh, Star. Oh, and the, the Death, Death Star eclipsing yeah. the yeah, like the moon. The, yeah, that was, the moon or every time I see the Death Star in those trailers, it always gives me goosebumps a yeah. little bit. It's great. So yeah, it's just yeah. So, um, I'm still a yes big time on it. Oh, yeah, everyone's going to be a yes on Rogue One. Yeah. I'm just, I'm still really, like, I'm I'm still, I'm just saying that I don't, I do think the first one was way better. And I don't, like, and just don't, I just think trailer, pe people make trailers need to stop trying to add in these surprises that these characters are in it. Mm. Like, it, it, that, I think it's just better if we they leave it for us to figure out ourselves or whatever, because it just makes it more interesting. Because that's the reason why the the Flash cameo in Suicide Squad was kind of enjoyable because it wasn't spoiled to us firsthand. Mm. There was no oh, Flash is in it, yeah, or okay. even like yeah, but it's yes, definitely. And uh, is there there? I mean, and this there's anything else? Unless, of course, you want to count. There is the girl on the train trailer did have some different footage in this one. Oh, just but, uh, yeah, some different footage, but it's very small, so it didn't really count. Because I I do remember seeing uh the the same trailer before. At least it begins the same way and ends the same way. Yeah, it was it just, has, just, it just was it just tweaked slightly? Yeah, because yeah, there were slight differences. There okay. were some different shots that yeah. weren't in there. And like another thing that was different too is they didn't. There's a lot of scene. They showed a lot of scenes of the the girl, the girl who got killed. They showed a lot of they like the thing they showed all the most was they did show like they also showed a lot more of um the that she was having her affair with these people that she had because she the first trailer actually only made it seem like she made it made it seem like she's only having an affair with like one guy what's his um Justin Therix. But it was, she was actually having an affair with this other guy, too. And they, they showed a bit more of that in this one. And they also just showed some more of her having sex with all these other people. And mm -hmm. they, they, but, yeah, they tweaked some stuff very briefly. And also, there wasn't the whole thing with the with the, with the husband going, I don't think you do care, or something like that. Mm -hmm. okay. But other than that, it didn't really change much. So I don't. I think my grade is probably the same I gave it before. I think it was a maybe. Um, well, I'm going to say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Though I like you the director, the Tate Taylor, so I mm -hmm. will... I'm still giving it. I'm just on a maybe because I'm still not sure about it. And like I said, it still bugs me with the whole the thriller that shocked the world. Like I mean, I understand why they're because I guess they're they, they know people are probably getting sick of based on the best selling novel or something. But it's just like the thriller that shocked the world. Like I told you before when we we talked about this before, and I'm just like, what? <laughs> it didn't I didn't really read it. So how did it shock the world? <laughs> I mean, I have the book, but I haven't read it yet. So. <laughs> Even if I read it, I'm not yeah. going to be like, oh! Shock like, the world, where have I been? <laughs> yeah. I just, like, it's just a weird thing for some reason. When we talk about, like, something that changed, like, the way we see things has always got to be, change the world. Like, I don't, I don't think we really changed the world. Like, it's not like the grass turned red when that happened. <laughs> but, <laughs> 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 I mean, the world just, like, or just, like, I'm thinking of, like, it's the world gets shocked. So, like, the, we're just, like, all sitting, <laughs> like, when the book came out, the, the world goes, oh! <laughs> So I just kind of think of that. All right. <laughs> Maybe they were shocked because oh, it's a fourth uh, the girl who did this in the in book, you know the girl with Dragon Tattoo, the girl who kicked the hornet's nest, well, it, played was, with fire. Well, yeah. the girl who uh, it's the girl with Dragon Tattoo, the girl who um the the girl who played with fire, the girl who who kicked the hornet's nest, and then there was the girl in the spider's web or something oh. like there. Yeah, there were because even though the writer of the books died, they, the new guy continued it for him or whatever. Right. Okay, so, Wait, so all right, so uh, we got kind of a crowded weekend next week. It's gonna have to be a multi-day weekend. We, um, I'm looking forward to Sully the most. Mm -hmm. and... I'm curious, like, though my only, um, this isn't really that much of an issue because I'm pretty sure it's based on a true story. But like, if you look at the trailer, there's like no, there, everyone in the trailer is white. <laughs> there's like no in both trailers. There's like I don't see any like anyone who's black or anything else everyone's just white but that's not a real promise i thought that was kind of interesting hmm. but 
I mean, we saw that trailer. I we don't saw. usually look around for that kind of thing. And... Yeah, but I, I don't. I don't usually either. I was just watching it, and I was just like, for some reason, randomly just thinking <laughs> when I was watching it. Man, there's a lot of white people, and then I just like, <laughs> <laughs> and I just like, wait, I don't think there's any black people here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's a Republican convention. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> It's just the joke that everyone makes that there's like barely any in there. That's always the joke. <laughs> people, are, I, I always hear people making, so I'm just like adding to it. But yeah, it's it looks good. I'll check it out. Yeah. What, 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 what else? Sorry. Okay. So, um. The uh, the disappointments room. Disappointments room I have right. a feeling that's not going to do very well because the trailer like just came out last week and it's coming out next week. Yeah. Um, well, it worked for Cloverfield, so. Yep. What else? Um, we, we got the wildlife. I might skip that one, though. I don't really yeah. care. It doesn't look all that good, but the 3D looks great. <laughs> it has some nice 3D, but yeah, just it looks kind of lame. The, the, the animation's kind of bland. Yeah. It's, it might... Same thing with uh, Alpha and Omega, that movie with the wolf. Oh, that yeah. one was terrible, but when I remember seeing the trailer, the CG looked nice. I mean, the 3D looked nice in the trailer, but it just... That movie was so boring and just, like, uh-huh. dull. I mean, it started out all right, but then once the wolf started to howl, I'm like, oh, God, now I hate this thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you, you saw that? We'll yeah, I saw that. <laughs> okay, so what what else? So, um, uh, you know, I, I have to give this one big complaint about, like, uh, the trailer for The Wildlife. They do this a lot with kids' movies. Why do you have to list off the names of the characters, like, in print, in the trailer? Cause it's no... the trailer. We don't give a rip what their names are yet. Yeah. Well, because it's because they don't have any famous celebrities. They only have voice actors, so they have to say something. Because <laughs> people are used to saying, starring, um, Kevin Dibbles. <laughs> yeah. I remember they did that with Ice Age 2 as well. Just in case you haven't seen the first, and you're yeah, yeah but it's... and 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 even in that they they list off the names of the actors because it's got uh, popular actors uh, Ray Romano, Dennis Leary, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so just just yeah. one complaint. So there. what else is there? Is uh, the last one, when the bow breaks. All right, I'm yeah. I'm even though I'm not that interested in when the bow breaks, I'll still check it out just so we can talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm kind of curious. I'm still kind of curious about it. Because the second trailer was a little better. But yeah, that's all right. Okay, man. I was. Although I gotta say, I was. I was praying to God that remember the goal was gonna come around. It didn't. Oh, it didn't. Yeah. Although I did read one review on IMDb calling it a hilariously awful kind of movie. But it didn't show up at all. It, it, nah, it, it didn't. It, it it was released, but it never came here. You mean? Yeah. It's all, it is only the second Cristiano Brothers movie that got a theatrical release. And and I, I think it might have gotten slightly wider with like their their other movie, A Matter of Faith. Yeah. It started out really small and then uh, and then just a few more, like six months later. Yeah. But we'll see what happens. But, but, um, yeah, darn I wanna see that and laugh at it. <laughs> yeah, but, okay. but we still don't worry, we still have the uh, other pure flicks movie the the one about the columbine shootings yeah you know, actually that that was uh something i was going to add about uh about how the uh, the girl on the train trailer was slightly tweaked in there sometimes that can make a difference because the most recent trailer for i'm not ashamed it was it was actually probably what the trailer should have been like from the start because did, did you see my uh my response video no i didn't uh, I made I made a response video for the previous two trailers. The the new one is actually pretty much the same, like uh like scenes and dialogue wise for the most part. But there are just a few changes. There, are, there are like a like a few more scenes added in there, and and also it takes out the the final line that we hear in both of the trailers. Where Rachel says, "Jesus gave his life for me. Now I'm gonna give my life to him." You kind of get the feeling that's kind of what the the main theme of the movie is going to be which which although that should play a part because that's that's who rachel was it really shouldn't i don't think it should be the uh the center of it all because you know big event columbine massacre so the new trailer takes out that line and instead it ends with her uh with her with her like uh her theory about how just one act of compass- compassion can start a chain reaction. And so I could see Rachel Scott being kind of a 
kind of a, I, okay, I don't exactly want to repeat myself through the whole thing. Just go watch my uh, trailer response video for all the details. And so I just got to say, because this new trailer, like, takes out that line, adds, adds some different music, like, um, in, in the first one, it was a song by Jeremy Camp, an obviously Christian song, and replaces that with a song that kind of has more of a, uh, more of a somber but kind of hopeful sound to it. That kind of, uh, that I feel kind of, uh, kind of sets the, kind of sets the mood for, for the, uh, the weight of this historical event, so... So maybe because they made that new trailer, maybe they're trying to give us a better idea of what the movie's actually going to be like. Because I can't, I think maybe, just maybe, that they're, in the other ones, they were making the spiritual elements kind of front and center in, in it all just to appeal to the studio's usual religious audience. Mm -hmm. Would, would kind of make sense, because I got that trailer before God's Not Dead too. But, but, uh, it's, uh, it's... Got a good director on it, so I'm I'm really curious as to how it's going to turn out. So that's that is seven weeks from now. So so we'll see who whenever yeah we'll see <laughs> whenever next week maybe depend depending on if any of us show up. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully John will, won't be so busy. What did John say? Why he was busy? No, no, he didn't. He just said he couldn't come. All right. We'll see. So, all right. So long.